Seven. There's three sets. Still one. Deacons in green up against Toners. Must win match for Deacons. Nice rally going. Deep spike and out. Good judgment. Both teams looked a little sluggish early on. Toners able to handle the attacks and some luck always helps. But the opening set belongs to Deacons. Fabia Graves with the dink. Easy stuff. Then the girls in green making their intentions clear. Cross court off Sharice Austin and way up. Deacons 25-20 in the first set. Second set now and the tables turn. Toners back set and Deacons can't handle. In fact, Deacons look unsure of what to do when receiving serve. Got her footwork and communication mixed up here. Toners loving it. Toners claiming the second and third sets. 25-14, 25-19. Power off the double block and out. Well, let's head to the vital four. Deacons needing to win this one to level. Crawford, Lone Ranger at the net, getting it done. Then Toners make a meal out of a free ball, a present for Deacons. But Toners stuck to the task, pinpoint spike for the kill. Then Tiffany Smith laying down the heavy stuff, too hot to handle. Deacons not going away quietly, Dink and Phillips with the error. But it would be Toners to prevail Set point, Cherise Austin delivering. They win the four, 25-19, and the match, three sets to one. Second game now, no pressure on Warrens as they clash with Carlton, closest to the screen. That's an ace. Warrens snatch the first set, 25-17. Talia Lane warming up from the opposite side, just as effective. Warrens looking determined. Second set now, this one had to make the highlights. Rian Niles says have some. Then follows it up with a rejection at the net. Warrens 25-16 in the second and up 2-0. The third, some resistance by Carlton after trailing 4-8, breaking through the defenses of Niles on this occasion. Credit due to Carlton. They managed to get to 20 before Warrens put the stamp of approval on the win. 25-20, three straight, and the league crown to boot. Congratulations to them. Well, Talma House made 2016 a hat-trick of victories when they won the Christchurch Foundation School Inter-House Competition at the National Stadium. Talma amassed a whopping 983 points ahead of Wellington with 855, followed by Innes, Skeet and Lynch House. It was a day when 20 records were broken. Reporting on some of the action, is CBC's Anne-Marie Burke. They say Foundation has the ammunition to be BSAC champions, and if their inter-house meet is anything to go by, watch out. The records were tumbling like water. This is the under-17 girls' 400 meters, where from beginning to end, the battle was between Hannah Connor and Rosette Hoyt. Final 100 meters. This is going to be Keenan right now to the end. Our both it's girls were stride for stride. Who will get the edge? It will be Hoyt on the inside. A new record, 58.78 seconds. Connell also under with 58.81. As the old record of 59.04 was gone. In third, Lanisha Brathwaite. Boys on the 17, picking it up in the final 200 meters as he was just unstoppable. Laquan Trotman, Talmas star boy, arms pumping, smooth strikes. Chasing the second was Shea Walks. Also of Talma, the winning time, 54.84 seconds, and Ajani Sobers was in for third. The under-20 girls race was a one-woman parade as Tiana Boyne continues to send a warning that she is in peak form. Skeet House in short of maximum points. Boys time, 56.62 seconds. Blew away the old record of 58 seconds. Finishing fast for second and third, Krista Maloney and Elizabeth Williams. The big boys 400 meters had a studded lineup. Under 20s in the green shirt for Lynch House. Yup, that's Rivaldo Leacock. No longer a Lester Vaughan student, but will be donning the black and gold for a foundation as he continues to show why he's among the world's best juniors. Despite a heavily bandaged hamstring, he is the big man. A comfortable 48.72 seconds. Kofi McCollin, second, 50.67. And third, Rio Williams, 51.69. 
Keep your eyes on the team from Christchurch Foundation, Visa. Here they come. Anne Marie Burke, CBC Sports. The Victory Sudorum title was won by Hannah Connell of Innes House as she amassed 79 points, while the Victor Ludorum was Nathan Crawford Wallace of Skeet House, who tallied 78 points. The Barbados Football Association has been playing host to members of federations from the Caribbean Football Union for a FIFA seminar on pitch maintenance at the Radisson Hotel. CBC's Anne-Marie Burke stopped in on the seminar's opening session. Over 60 participants representing 30 member countries of the Caribbean Football Union have been on the island engaged in a FIFA seminar focused on pitch maintenance. Just as important as the development of the players and coaches, FIFA sees the need to ensure its facilities around the world are also of a high standard. Speaking at the opening ceremony, Minister of Sports Stephen Lashley said it couldn't come at a better time as Barbados has been faced with the major challenge of poor maintenance of its sporting facilities. Oftentimes, we are quick and eager to develop facilities, but we are not as quick and as eager to ensure we have proper maintenance plans. So I believe that this workshop, which focuses your attention on the techniques and the approaches towards the maintenance of football astroturfs, is extremely relevant and timely President of the BFA, Randy Harris, said with the AstroTurf facility already functioning at Wildey, its maintenance is key. There's also the move to make it a fully functional venue. At the moment, um, there are two projects. Uh, one is the bleachers project. Uh, that has hit a kind of snag because while FIFA has okayed the fun funding uh, for the project, uh, the project goes over the uh, allocated funds and um, as far as I understand uh, the bleachers come under a tariff that prevents uh, the government here from waiving any, any duties that can make it possible. However, uh, we're still in discussion with FIFA to see if we can um, still benefit because there, it is critical to us. We don't have a seating at the National Stadium. And as you know, we want to fully develop with it. Anne-Marie Burke, CBC Sports. Thanks again, Anne-Marie. Well, the cricket legends of Barbados got a facelift today when an outstanding piece of artwork featuring the greatest cricketer of all time, Sir Garfield Sobers, was added to the museum. CBC's Shane Jones filed this story. Sir Gary on the Green, that's the name of the painting that has reportedly raised over 130,000 U.S. dollars for the children of the Sandy Lane Charitable Trust unveiled at the Legends of Barbados. A stunning piece of 23-year-old Barbadian impressionist Gina Chatrani, who donated her work to the Trust with the permission of Sir Gary, who turns 80 this year. Martin and Lady Sally Arbe purchased the painting during the live auction on January 15th and gave it to Sir Gary, who was also at the event. Sir Gary, in turn, donated the painting to the Legends of Barbados Museum. Various cricketing legends were on hand for the presentation, inclusive of Sir Wes Hall, Cammie Smith, Charlie Griffith, Raw Branker, and Vasper Drakes. Desmond Haynes reveals how the painting ended up at the Legends headquarters. And, uh, I remember when this thing started, um, I got a call from telling us about what happened with, at the charity, the Sandy Lane charity, and um, it was offered to Sir Garfield Sobers if he's going to keep the painting at his house. And Sir Garfield Sobers called me in the morning and said, it's too big for my house, I can't tell him anything. I can't tell him plenty letters. <laughs> Shane Jones, CBC Sports. Well, thanks, Shane, and that's it for sports this evening. Up next, the business report.